Well, this video is on a 2000 Nissan Maxima with a five speed transmission. I have a number of jobs to do on it. One is to replace the uh, CV axle seal on the driver's side, the uh, oil pressure switch, which is on the passenger side, replace the coolant drain and refill the gearbox, replace the clutch slave cylinder, replace the clutch master cylinder. So let me get you underneath and just show you a couple of items. Let's start with the transmission. Remarkably dirty. So the seal that's got to be replaced is this one up here. So that means taking the wheel off, the CV axle shaft out, uh, disconnecting the uh, uh, front strut, the steering linkage, quite a few things to remove. I'll be showing you that in a later video. <clears throat> The drain plug for the manual transmission is this here, believe it or not. And it looks as if that bracket, which is a gear shift um, mechanism bracket, is right in the way. What a stupid design. God, guys, they could have just put a little shape in the bracket so you could get the nut out. Again, another screw up from a car designer who does it deliberately to screw with you so you have to take it to the dealer. So that's the uh, drain plug there. The fill plug is there. Okay. So there's your fill plug. Make sure whatever you do that that comes out before you start draining. This I will give a clean up as well for the customer. The oil pressure switch is there as you can see leaking like a sieve so I'm going to replace that and I'm sure when I take that out oil will come out and it's been throwing oil everywhere the radiator drain plug is up there and there is a hole directly in this plastic shield directly underneath and it does it drains straight down and into it um, I've just drained it I got a little bit on the floor, but most of it actually went in the bucket, so can't complain too loudly about that. Now, the clutch slave cylinder, uh, can't really see it. It's up there. I'll show you that later. And obviously the master cylinder is on the firewall. It looks like someone's made a bodge here trying to uh, stop a leak. Not quite sure why. Maybe... The main seal has gone on the transmission. I guess that's something that will be found out. All right, so next is to get started and see if I can uh, remove this uh, fill plug. If I can, then I'm going to start taking out the drain plug, which is there. But as I said, I don't think it'll come out. So I might have to try and... Good God. So there's one nut there. Where's the other one? Oh my god. <laughs> well, I'm sure you can't see this, but it's up and around where my fingers are here. There's a bolt there. Wow. Yep, I got a funny feeling I may need to undo that one. And how do I get to that nut? Crikey. Lucky I've got a very shallow socket set that maybe allow me to get to that nut up there. We will see. All right. That is definitely the drain plug. And this bracket has to be undone in order for you to get the drain plug out. As I said, stupid, fucking design. Now the bolts that hold that in are 
they're a, a 14 millimeter let me just double check that yeah they're a 14 millimeter and the drain plug itself uh, is actually a 12 sorry for the bad camera work here I'm just trying to make sure I'm not lying and giving you the wrong numbers Hang on, give me a second here yeah the drain plug itself is a 12 the bracket bolts are a 14 there is no way other than to take those bolts out to get that drain plug out um, I have a very um, good low profile wrench and socket you may need to get that in order to get these bolts out so I use that and these very low profile um, I call them a ring spanner I don't know what you guys call them so that's where we are at the moment just waiting for this to finish draining then uh, it's cleanup time then we refill it and we also refill the radiator then from there we will move on to the um, transmission seal in fact what I may do as the oil is already drained out I may well get that seal out first that way there's no chance of any oil coming out All right, guys so this is uh, the Nissan Painus Innus Rectimus So one thing to note that the oil that goes in this transmission is an 8090 gear oil and it's the GL5. This is the correct oil for this vehicle when it has a manual transmission. Alright, in order to get to the seal on the transmission, um, you have to remove a few things on the uh, driver's side as it happens um, I have disconnected this which is the ABS uh, sensor and there's plenty of slack on there now so my plan is that uh, when these are undone I should be able to tilt this out enough hopefully to pull the shaft out if I can't then I'm gonna have to undo this nut and undo the ball joint and take the whole assembly off I'm kinda of hoping I don't have to do that but we'll see um, also uh, you do need to disconnect the tie rod ends as you can see this customer's one's totally shot so I'll be giving him a note about that and also the fact that the lower ball joint's gone so really the lower control arm should be replaced and so should the tie rod ends that'll be a, a job for another day that's not happening today um, what I do in order to uh, get the uh, the ball joint, uh, sorry, the tie rod end separated is I use two hammer method. You place one behind it, the big ass one. Once you've got the nut and split pin off, and then hit it. And that shocks it. Now sometimes it takes quite a few bangs, but that shocks it and then it just pops out nice and easy. Uh, one other thing that has to come off is this brake line. Um, I'm going to remove the caliper as well so that I don't cause any damage to the brake line. And I find this, this, this method works using a, a pair of uh, side cutters. Just grabbing the clip. Pull it out nice and easy. Works. And then you can just move that brake line out of the way safely now there might be enough slack on that for me to tip it forward uh, I'm not going to risk it I'm going to undo the caliper and then tie it up to uh, I don't know the shock absorber I'll, I'll, I'll tie it up somewhere safe or maybe maybe there's enough slack on it for me to rest it on the uh, on the ramp but don't let it hang on the flexible hose it's possible you will damage it, break it, and then you've got another pain in the ass job to deal with. I can see on this one that uh, someone along the way has put on different uh, shock absorbers here or struts, adjustable ones. Neat. All right, let me now get the caliper off 
Uh, not sure what size that is, but I will give you a moment and I will tell you. Oops, nope. It's probably something like a 12, I would imagine. That's the one that fits it. It's a 14. So, uh, what? <laughs> Another thing. Let me just show you something that. Uh, Believe it or not, I hadn't done this for years. Yes, you do believe it, don't you? Um, in order to get a caliper off, quite often a lot of people struggle. Get yourself one of these G-clamps. Place it somewhere secure on the back, making sure you're not on the pipe. And then just wind it up on the pad. You don't need to do much. It's just enough to take the pressure off. So, give that a squeeze. Okay, that's all you need to do. Unless you're replacing the pads. If you're replacing the pads, then you want to squeeze it in as far as you can get it. Now, my theory is that I should just be able to undo that. We will see. Quite often, Murphy bites me. Should have used the longer wrench. <laughs> this is not the way to do it. I'll get the right tool, will you, dummy? You see, right tool for the job. Don't screw around like I just did. It's really dumb. Nice wrench. See? Easy. <coughs> okay. Now, the theory is, I should just come out now. Right. Okay. And as always, nice little tray. Keep all your butts and knots in. Because this one just doesn't want to come undone. That would be too helpful, wouldn't it? There we go. Right. And let's pull this back and off. Oh, look at that. It is actually long enough to rest so I don't have to worry about it. Now, these pads are wearing unevenly, which tells me, yeah, you see that one moves in and out. This one doesn't. This should move in and out. Whoever did the brake job last didn't do a very good job. They should have pulled these out and re-greased them. Um, I will do that for the customer. Here, oh dear. Some people never learn. Yeah, I see these pads have almost had it. Again, I'll recommend the customer gets uh, new pads. Yeah. But that has got to come out. I've got to get that out. Yeah, all right. We'll deal with that in a minuet. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do. Grab myself some PB Blaster and give these two bolts a soak in PB Blaster. I'll be back. Right, given that a damn good soaking now in uh, PB Blaster, the next thing I wanted to show you, now that these pads are out, is these weren't replaced either when they did the brake job. Um, which means the pads are not sliding in and out nice and easily. You'll get noise, you'll get squealing, and you also you'll get less brake efficiency. And this car is quite a fast car. So, uh, and looking at the state of these rotors, how rusty they are, how warm they are, I would guess that somebody has turned these at one point. And I'm not a lover of turning rotors. I don't think it's worth it. 
you'll spend twenty dollars a rotor turning them whereas new ones may cost you let's say forty dollars so you know yeah double the price but pff, a lot better braking efficiency all right uh, again that is something i'll let the customer know that he really needs a proper brake job on this and uh, he can then decide what he wants to do all right let's uh, leave that to soak for a while and then we'll uh, get that disconnected as we progress um a test again those of you that were paying attention uh, before I had it supported under the control arm so uh, <laughs> that is not the right place to support this when you're trying to disconnect this um, I really wasn't paying attention um, you must uh, support it on the frame underneath um, then you'll be able to get these bolts out and uh, you know I, I put that in there just for uh, safety sake at the moment and I'm going to take this bolt out on the top then then I can easily remove this, but trying to do it with the bolt can sometimes be a little tricky um, on this one. It'll probably just tap out, but let's see. Nah, it, it's very tight in there, so uh, I just need, to, yeah, looking at it, it's resting on the bottom, so I just need to lift it up a little bit, then I'll be able to pull that bolt out. Uh, I'm also, I'm going to take this off so I can get the disc off. It's just less weight for me to be messing with when I'm trying to just pull the shaft out, replace the seal, put the shaft back in. Um, it just makes it a little easier to handle. I'm still hoping that I don't need to do anything more than uh, pivot it out. I really don't want to take this uh, nut off because I believe the torque setting for that is um, next to bloody ridiculous. <laughs> so, I don't want to do that. All right. And, uh, all right, well, let's uh, let's progress. Oh, oh and, yeah, another little aside note here. I was started to uh, undo this. I mean, in fact, I undid the nut for the ABS sensor. I could not move it. Yeah, I could have got brute force and ignorance on it. But then I would have had to buy the customer a brand new one because I feel sure that is going to break. So sometimes you just kind of have to work around these things, okay? There you go. All right, uh, next will be, uh, what will it be? Hopefully this shaft, um, this suspension disconnected and then me uh, pulling the shaft out. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's see if I got, oh, my light died, there we go. I don't know if I got enough in my uh, compressor to try and take these bolts out. Let's see. If not, I may have to get a breaker bar on it. Oh, there she goes, that's one. And don't forget when you're putting these back in, lock tight. Not red, blue. What, he says? I wanna put red on. Yeah, you can put red on if you want. Oh, that just missed my toes. If you put red on, it's a fucking pig to get off next time around. Let me just grab this here a second. Just need a little extension. It's funny, my wife says the same thing. You just need a little extension. About 14 inches. Jeez, on top of my seven. Oh, Let's try it on. Off. Okay, this one's going to take a little bit of work. In fact, I will give it a quick dose of PB, and maybe that will help it. Back in a moment. All right, the shaft is out. You do have to put a little pressure on the uh, lower control arm as uh, you pull it out because you want to get it away from the seal because you don't want to damage the new seal when you're putting it in and I use my little friend here to pry it out at this end don't pull from here if, you know from this end if you pull from here you could disconnect the shaft inside if you do that then you're gonna to have to go buy the customer a new CV axle 
because getting them back in is virtually impossible. Not impossible, just virtually impossible. So now my trick is to go and get the seal. In fact, let's do that now. I just want to make sure before I pull that one out that this one's the same size. I'm, I'm sorry if you can't see this. <laughs> Let's see. Oops, I dropped it. Yep, looks like it's the same size seal. And what I'm going to try and do to uh, to tap it in uh, once I've pulled that one out with my special seal removing tool is I'm going to try tapping that in with a nice new, um, not nice new, uh, a, a socket. And in case you don't have one of these, go buy one. This is a snap-on stroke blue point one, and it is ideal for removing seals. I don't think you're going to be able to see me doing this, although I will try. Let me see if I can get my light in there. And it hooks in behind the seal, and out she comes just like that it's worth it it makes life so much easier second chance for me to check seal is the same all right next let me find the correct socket for that seal hopefully you saw that I'm, I'm not sure there you go seals the same seal tool uh, now find a socket big enough to tap this in if not a socket I'll find something else to drift it in and my worst case scenario is I'll use the old seal there, you know there's nothing wrong with doing that I just put it over there and then I tap on the old seal um, I'd probably trim this off first uh, that way at least I don't hit the new seal okay so just bear that in mind all right my hands are getting real doidy Oh, and that's another thing in there. You want to clean. Sorry, you want to clean this all up. I'm going to give it a good dose of uh, brake cleaner. Okay, uh, just want to let you know how I managed to get that seal in. Now this is the old seal. This is a an old bearing race that I had, and it is a perfect fit. So you need to find something that'll do that, uh, because that way it doesn't damage this. It just fits nicely in there unfortunately it's not easy to get to so I had to use a, a long piece of wood and gently tap it in now that is in there so now we need to pull on this and just slide it in and pray that we get it lined up this can be a little fiddly. Whoops, don't you do that, you baby. <gasps> no, 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 no. Oh, and there she goes. All right, okay, let me get my rod in here. Why do I want to get it in there? So that it doesn't put strain on the joint. And now I can get my persuader just to locate the CV axle properly. Not quite there yet. Going to take a little more persuasion. All right, shaft is back in. Uh, now it's just a matter of putting everything back together. Um, I'm not going to show you that. You took it all apart. You can put it back together without my help, I'm sure. Uh, not forgetting your tie rod ends, etc. Um, I do have the caliper over in my parts washer. Oh, sorry, not the caliper, the cradle, uh, which I will give a good clean before I put it back in. Uh, this will be the end of part one. Part two will be the replacement of the clutch slave cylinder and the clutch master cylinder. Um, as I'm sure you remember, I have not refilled the gearbox yet. There is the plug there. 
and the reason I didn't do that is because I knew I was pulling this shaft out and I didn't want oil pissing out everywhere so now that I've got the shaft back in I like to get my shaft in then I will <laughs> Ooh, naughty boy. Um, I will fill it up with oil that's it for this part one part two in uh, maybe a day <laughs>